This is kind of a fun trip, huh? Yeah. Just the boys. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you something? Yes. What's your favorite memory of Francis? Probably when we were on the bed there together. When you were on the bed together? Yeah. What did you do on the bed? Well, I was trying to have sex with her. Oh, cool. Nathan Fielder's 2017 documentary, Finding Francis, centers around Nathan's quest to reunite a professional Bill Gates impersonator with his lost love, who he fell out of touch with 60 years ago. Still trying to find her. I don't know where she is. Francis? I don't know. Can I use the bathroom quickly and then we'll talk when I come sure. out? Okay. The film is also the series finale to Fielder's docu-reality comedy series, Nathan For You, where he plays an exaggerated version of himself, helping small businesses with insane schemes that often cause the owner more trouble than they're worth. The series is anchored by Fielder's performance, where he plays an incredibly awkward version of himself that never breaks character to the point where the audience is not sure if he's acting. So if you want to come hang out there and let, give her time to shop, you want, it's up to you. Do yeah. okay. Don't leave this uh, bro hanging, Doc. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Great. What makes Finding Francis special is that Fielder not only imbues it with his usual comedic style, but using the theme of lost love and regret as a template, he creates an incredibly deep, uncomfortable, and fourth wall breaking film that leaves the viewer unsure of what exactly they should be feeling and if those feelings are even genuine. There she is. That's her. That's her? Yes, that is her. Golly. She. <laughs> That's her. That's her. That's her. The catalyst for the film is Bill Heath, who Nathan previously worked with during one of his schemes that involved making a fake movie to trick tourists into buying souvenirs at a store. When we started our computers um, back in the 80s, it was huge. Over the next couple of months, Bill continually shows up at the studio, where he keeps mentioning his lost love, Francis Gaddy, to Nathan. Seeing Bill's regret, Nathan agrees to help Bill search for Francis, which brings them on a cross-country journey that causes them to create a fake movie to steal Francis' high school yearbook, hire an age specialist. So this is her... At age that... Um, 75? 76, yeah, 75, 76 years old. And create theater exercises, among other things. I'm here to marry my Your wife. wife. Okay, you understand wife. English? Although the humor in this episode comes from this quest, in true documentary fashion, Nathan also examines who Bill is and why Francis is so important to him. At first he comes off as just a kind yet eccentric old man, but Nathan really digs into who Bill is and why exactly he's doing this. Maybe she couldn't figure out me. Can you figure out you? <laughs> Myself? Sometimes I wonder. The viewer really does get an intimate understanding of all the complexities in Bill's life, and the closer they get to Frances, the clearer it becomes that Bill intends to marry her, even after finding out she's already been married. It gets to the point where the viewer is not sure whether or not they should be laughing at Bill, as even though he may be misguided in trying to find Frances, there is an honestness and desperation to him that I think almost everyone can relate to in some way. Plus, there was something about an old man so filled with regret that was hard for me to ignore. And I realized, if I didn't help him do this, no one would. Just like Nathan, the viewer feels the desire to see Bill's dream be fulfilled, making the romance have an epic Shakespearean feel. This feeling is shattered at the end, when Nathan and Bill finally reach Francis's house. Bill decides to call Francis, and is disheartened when she does not recognize him. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Tell her. You don't know who I am? Think hard. 
I don't sound familiar to you? He ends up talking with her, but it is clear what he wanted from her is no longer there, and the dream of this romance shatters for both Bill and the audience. All of it has such a strange feeling, because what once was comedy now feels like tragedy, and what was first presented as fake now feels heartbreakingly real. Somehow, without us fully realizing it, Feeler has added a whole new layer to the film, one that makes the viewer feel uneasy about what was real and what wasn't, and whether or not they should have been laughing this whole time. Despite everything that happens, Nathan never treats Bill like a punchline, which keeps the documentary aspect of the film feeling authentic. Throughout the journey, it is clear that Feeler cares about Bill, and by the end of it, regards him as a friend. There's a scene where Nathan rents a theater and a stand-in actor for Francis to help Bill rehearse what he's going to do when he meets her. During the very first rehearsal, Bill, who is supposed to be acting as himself, breaks down crying when he sees the actor portraying Francis. Francis! God, I can't believe it's you! Bill! Oh, oh my god! It's been so long! <laughs> Is this really you? Um, oh, oh my goodness. I can't believe it's you. As a viewer, the scene is incredibly uncomfortable because despite knowing all of the setups are fake, we can see Bill genuinely overcome by emotion during the rehearsal. It is so strange to be viewing a man acting out what will be one of the most important moments in his life and seeing that same man begin crying for real despite knowing that the scenario is false. Just like Bill, the audience is not sure where exactly reality is in the scene. There's a part of me that finds this whole sequence hilarious, but at the same time, I feel wrong for laughing at Bill bearing his soul on stage. At first, the rehearsal does not go well, but Nathan suggests that Bill and Francis switch roles so that he might get a better understanding of Francis. Upon doing this, we can see the change in Bill almost immediately, as he is forced to literally shift his perspective. Never heard from you, write you letters, call you on the phone, ignore the calls. All you wanted was the career, the career in Hollywood. You were just doing it for yourself, self-centered. And once he switched back to himself again, a softer side of Bill seemed to emerge. I think it is remarkable what Fielder has done here. While the whole setup for this has been under the guise of comedy, the revelation Bill comes to is real, and something that by the end of the film actually benefits him. I highly doubt Fielder would have done all of this for the sake of comedy alone. This not only reinforces the narrative Fielder builds in Finding Francis, but also shows his relationship with the subject is not based solely on capturing his life. In this same way, the viewer feels genuine empathy towards Bill throughout the film. We want to see this romance succeed, even though we know it was never truly real to begin with. In a New Yorker essay on Finding Francis, legendary documentarian Errol Morris had this to say. Why is it that viewers are so willing to read the romance as real? Maybe Nathan For You is ultimately about our unfettered capacity for credulity, not just the suspension of disbelief, but the acceptance of the preposterous. Like Nathan, the viewer is drawn to Bill without even stopping to ask ourselves why. Bill is the jumping off point that Fielder uses to make Finding Francis something more ambitious than it would initially suggest. Fuller even goes as far as inserting himself into his own film. One of the best parts about watching Nathan For You is Fuller's performance as himself. Going under the guise of a business expert, he helps struggling small businesses with unorthodox strategies. Oftentimes, Nathan's ideas are either impossible for the owner to actually do, or end up hurting the business. You're a little funny. Okay. Kind of mean, but... You're mean? Really funny, yeah. What do you mean? You lied to every last one of them. I mean, it's You're business. You're like mean funny. <laughs> it's business, right? You're right, yeah. The thing that is most discomforting towards the audience is the fact that Fielder never breaks character to the point where we start to believe the person on screen is actually who he might be in real life. In the same article as mentioned earlier, Errol Morris says, This has been a problem with Nathan for you this feeling of discomfort. Should I be watching this? Does it make me into a less nice person? What are Nathan's intentions? Fielder will stop at nothing. No barrier of good taste, no fear of the irrational, no prohibitions against the ridiculous. What makes Nathan for you so heretical is that all of his projects are based on misrepresentation and lying. And yet, 
Not accidentally, they capture something of the essence of American business. Although a lot of his schemes are based on lying to people, there are many moments in the show where Nathan tries to make genuine human connections with people. For example, he creates a man zone for male customers in a woman's boutique, but does not realize why the men don't want to spend more than five minutes in the zone with him. You know what I feel like? A mother effing beer. It was just boys being boys. Nice catch. Just two dudes doing what guys do best. Crack that shit. Hanging out, grabbing a brewski, and watching royalty-free football. Oh yeah. Tampa Bay Bandits versus Houston Gamblers. Enjoy. The most recurring character arc in Nathan for you are Nathan's attempts to connect with people, only to be thwarted by his natural awkwardness and the fact that the people on the show think they are there solely for the sake of the show. So are people put off by Nathan because of his character, or because they know they're being filmed for a show? That is what Fueller examines in Finding Francis, when about an hour into the documentary he brings himself to the forefront of the action. When Bill declines to go on a date with a female escort to practice his conversation skills, I hate to use that term, you gotta know what you're sticking it in. Jesus, Bill. Nathan decides to go on the date instead. It becomes clear that he's attracted to the escort Macy and begins to pay for more and more dates with her. What follows are some of the most uncomfortable scenes imaginable, as the viewer watches Nathan try to form a romantic relationship with Macy, who is only spending time with Nathan because it's her job. What makes these scenes so hard to watch is the fact that Fielder becomes so vulnerable and genuine in them that we're unsure if he's even acting anymore. <sighs> You okay? I'm fine. <laughs> okay, I'm good. The most confusing part of all of this is Nathan is essentially playing a fake version of himself trying to romance a woman who also puts on a persona for her work. The line between what's real and what's acting becomes so blurred that the viewer really cannot make up their mind on how to feel about all of this. Morris goes on to say about these scenes, The final episode in the fourth season goes two steps further. Is it ridiculous? Yes. Is it disturbing? Yes. And yet Nathan draws himself into the story, actually creates a parallel story, almost like a mirror on the proceedings, and in the process creates his essay on love. It seems very unlikely that Fielder just added this subplot in randomly. Yes, it is funny, but while watching Finding Francis, I always stop and ask myself just why I'm laughing. I agree with Morris in how Fielder uses all the awkwardness and raw moments of his documentary to make the viewer question their own ideas about love and some of the artificiality surrounding it. However, it's his breaking of the fourth wall throughout the documentary that really makes this connection with him and the viewer feel real. There is always a level of dramatic irony present in every episode of Nathan For You. Usually Nathan is tricking a group of people into doing something for reasons that only he and the audience truly understands. Average gym member in America spends over $700 a year to perform physical labor that's very similar to the work that David's employees do. So if we can make a convincing argument that moving boxes and furniture from house to house is a better workout than going to the gym, David could tap into an endless supply of labor that would actually pay him for the opportunity to move stuff. The plan? Turn the job of moving into America's next fitness craze. Through breaking the fourth wall in this way, the audience always feels a connection to Nathan in the way that we're the ones in on the joke and are laughing at the people in the show's ignorance. In Finding Francis, however, Fielder takes breaking the fourth wall to the extreme in ways where the audience is no longer just looking at the people in the film but also looking at themselves. I've mentioned earlier Fielder's manipulation of the viewer to get them to root for Bill's romance and making the viewer sit through the escort scenes, and it's the final moments of Finding Francis that really tie these moments together and reveal Fielder's thesis for the film. It's kind of weird having cameras around, right? We could turn them off if you want. <laughs> could we? Do you want to? <laughs> I feel like that, does that defeat the purpose? Maybe? Of what? I don't know. What's the purpose? You're filming something. It's kind of the purpose, right?
We do have this drone. It would be cool to get a drone shot, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be sad, be glad, be happy for me. I'll be home come sundown in the land where I'm free. Oh, you think? While it may not be clear at first, this ending shows not only the point of finding Francis, but of Nathan for you as a whole. Fielder has built his series around the idea of how people act when a camera is put in front of them. Will they put on a persona? Will they act genuine? Or will they just be confused? This is something Nathan's character struggles with the entire series as he tries to make genuine connections with people under the inherently fake premise of a reality TV show. He uh, married her ex-boyfriend and uh... I'm in LA training dogs. Oh crap. On the finale, Morris comments, We're so far into a bizarre, constructed realm that when the camera pulls back and we see everything as a kind of set, as a TV show which is being filmed, it has a destabilizing effect. We knew it all along. Or didn't we? The feeling of uncertainty that Morris speaks about during that last drone shot is something I feel as well every time I see it. Never before has Fielder shown the camera crew filming him in such a direct way, and it feels like a wake-up call that after all the insanity witnessed over the past 80 minutes, now reality is coming back. Finding Francis starts simple enough, but as the viewer gets sucked into the dream of finding Bill's lost love and Nathan's own journey for human connection, when we see the camera crew at the end, it feels like the rug is being yanked out from under us. I think Fielder is not definitively saying the reality of the film has all been fake, but instead he's asking us to wonder why we believed it to be real in the first place. When Nathan asks Macy, what's the purpose, it's hard not to feel like he's winking at the audience. For me, it's this breaking of the fourth wall that makes Finding Francis so fascinating. Despite showing the artifice of the film, at the very ending, the emotions and discomfort the viewer has still feels real and is real. Whether you bought into Bill's search for love or not, it's impossible to deny the uncertainty Fielder creates in the film through continually shattering the lines that separate him and the viewer. What makes Finding Francis so special is like most great works of art, you can still enjoy it just as much without looking at all the deeper themes present. Take away all the fourth wall breaking and you still have the painful yet always entertaining awkward comedy that Fielder excels at. I've seen Finding Francis about a dozen times by now, and for me, every time I see it, I think I get a clearer picture of what he's trying to say. I think Fielder sums it up best with his final voiceover. It's easy to look at someone else's life as a cautionary tale. After all, no one wants to be old and filled with regret. Oh, oh my three. goodness, oh how sharp you look. Well, you look. Oh. Boy, you know, I'm gonna compliment your teeth again there, but ah. I just... Let's toast to your teeth. All right. My mother always told me, she said, you get to that dentist every six months, June. I said, all right, Mom. But if you look closer and see that that life is filled with moments of sincere joy, however fleeting, it's hard to say if it was really a bad life after all. Even after all the antics leading up to this final cheesy affirmation of the joys of life, I can't help but believe Fielder is saying all of this with authenticity. His intent with finding Francis and Nathan for you was never to trick us just for the sake of a joke. Through his hilarious failures at human connection, we can also see some of the best parts that come with connecting with other people. Even though it presents itself as a simple journey to reunite a Bill Gates impersonator with his lost love, there is something about finding Francis that makes it endlessly rewatchable. Whether it be because of the incredible cringe humor or Fielder's reality-shattering commentary, to me, this film is what peanuts are to Bill Heath. Here I go, dig it in again. In time, the earth will have to stomach what we spew and face the trees we killed before they grew. From your disconnected at you